This is A History of Heresies and the Refutation by St. Alphonsus Liguori. Chapter 1. Heresies of the First Century. Gnosticism. Simon Magus, the first heretic who disturbed the church, was born in a part of Samaria called Githin or Githis. He was called Magus, or the magician, because he made use of spells to deceive the multitude, and hence he acquired among his countrymen the extraordinary name of the Great Power of God. This man is the power of God, which is called Great, seeing that those on whom the apostles Peter and John laid hands received the Holy Ghost, he offered them money to give to him the power of communicating the Holy Ghost in like manner, and on that account, the detestable crime of selling holy things is called simony. He went to Rome, and there was a statue erected to him in that city, a fact which St. Justin, in his first apology, flings in the face of the Romans. In your royal city, he says, he, Simon, was esteemed a god, and the statue was erected to him in the Isle of the Tiber, between the two bridges, bearing this Latin inscription, Simoni Deo Sancto. Samuel, Busnage, Petavius, Valesius, and many others deny this fact, but Tillamont, Gotius, Fleury, and Cardinal Orsi defend it, and adduce in favor of it the authority of Tertullian, St. Irenaeus, St. Hill of Jerusalem, St. Augustine, Eusebius, and Theodoret, who even says the statue is a bronze one. Simon boasts many errors, which Noel Alexander enumerates and refutes. The principal ones were that the world was created by angels, that when the soul leaves the body, it enters into another body, which, if true, says St. Irenaeus, it would recollect all that happened when it inhabited the former body, for memory, being a spiritual quality, it could not be separated from the soul. Another of his errors was one which has been brought to light by the heretics of our own days, that man had no free will, and consequently that good works are not necessary for salvation. Eronius and Flory relate that by four somatic spells, he one day caused the devil to elevate him in the air. But St. Peter and St. Paul being present, in invoking the name of Jesus Christ, he fell down and broke both his legs. He was carried away by his friends, but his corporal and mental sufferings preyed so much on him that in despair he cast himself out of a high window and thus perished the first heretic who ever disturbed the Church of Christ. The snage who endeavors to prove that St. Peter never was in Rome and never filled the pontifical chair of that city, says that this is all a fabrication, but we have the testimony of St. Ambrose, St. Isidore of Pelusium, St. Augustine, St. Maximus, St. Philistrius, St. Seal of Jerusalem, Servus Suplicius, Theodoret, and many others in our favor. We have, besides, a passage in Suetonius which corroborates the testimony, for he says that while Nero assisted at the public sports, a man endeavored to fly, but after elevating himself for a while, he fell down, and the emperor's pavilion was sprinkled with his blood. Menander was a Samaritan likewise, and a disciple of Simon Magus, whom he made his appearance in the year of our Lord, 73. He announced himself a messenger from the unknown power for the salvation of mankind. No one, according to him, could be saved unless he was baptized in his name and his baptism he said was a true resurrection, so that his disciples would enjoy immortality even in this life. Cardinal Orsi adds that Menando was the first who invented the doctrine of eons, and that taught that Jesus Christ exercised human functions in appearance alone. So in this was next after Menando, but he began to broach his doctrine in the same year. His errors can be reduced to four heads. Firstly, he denied that God was the creator of the world. Secondly, he asserted that the law of Moses was necessary for salvation. He also taught that after the resurrection, Jesus Christ would establish a terrestrial kingdom in Jerusalem where the just would spend a thousand years in the enjoyment of every sensual pleasure. And finally, he denied the divinity of Jesus Christ. The account Bernini gives of his death is singular. The apostle St. John, he says, met him going into a bath. When turning to those along with him, he said, Let us hasten out of this, lest we be burned alive. And they had scarcely gone outside when the whole building fell with a sudden crash, and the unfortunate Serentius was overwhelmed the wounds. One of the impious doctrines of this heretic was that Jesus was a mere man, born as all other men, and that when he was baptized in the river Jordan by St. John the Baptist, Christ ascended on him, that is, a virtue or power in the form of a dove, or a spirit sent by God to fill him with knowledge and communicate it to mankind. But after Jesus had fulfilled his mission by instructing mankind in working miracles, he was deserted by Christ, who returned to heaven, and left him to darkness and death. Alas, 
what impiety men fall into when they desert the light of faith and follow their own weak imaginations. Ebion prided himself in being a disciple of St. Peter and could even bear to hear St. Paul's name mentioned. He admitted the sacrament of baptism, but in the consecration of the Eucharist, he was nothing but water in the chalice. He, however, consecrated the host in, in unleavened bread, and Eusebius says he performed this every Sunday. According to St. Jerome, the baptism of the Ebionites was admitted by the Catholics. He endeavored to unite the Mosaic and Christian law and admitted no part of the New Testament unless the Gospel of St. Matthew, and even that mutilated as he left out two chapters and altered the others in many pieces. The ancient writers say that St. John wrote his Gospel to refute the errors of Ebion. The most impious of his blasphemies was that Jesus Christ was the son of Joseph and Mary, born as the rest of men or that he was but a mere man but that on account of his greater virtue the almighty adopted him as a son saturnius and basilides were disciples of menander whose history we have already seen and they made some additions to the heresy of their master saturnius a native of antioch taught with menander as flurry tells us that there was one only father unknown to all who created the angels and that seven angels created the world and man the god of the jews he said was one of these rebellious angels and it was to destroy him that Christ appeared in the form of man. Though he never had a real body, he condemned the matrimony and pre procreation as an invention of the devil. He attributed the prophecies partly to the angels, partly to the devil, and partly to the God of the Jews. He also said, according to St. Augustine, that the supreme virtue, that is, the sovereign father, having created the angels, seven of them rebelled against him, created man, and for this reason, seeing a celestial light, they wished to attain it, but it vanished from them. And they could then create a man to resemble it, saying, Let us make man to the image and likeness. Man, being thus created, was like a mere worm, incapable of doing anything, till the sovereign virtue, hitting his image, placed in him a spark of himself and gave him life. This is the spark which, at the dissolution of the body, flies to heaven. Those of a sect alone, he said, had this spark. All the others were deprived of it, and consequently, retrobate. Basilides, according to Fleury, was a native of Alexandria and even exceeded Saturnius in fanaticism. He said that the father, whom he called Abraxas, produced Noahs, that is, intelligence, who produced Logos, or the word. The word produced Pronius, that is, prudence and prudence, Sophia and Dunamis, that is, wisdom and power. These created the angels who formed the first heaven and other angels. And these, in the turn, produced a second heaven, and so on, until there were 365 heavens produced, according to the number of days in the year. The God of the Jews, he said, was the head of the second order of angels, and because he wished to rule all nations, the other princes rose up against him, and, so, and on that account, God sent his firstborn Noahs to free mankind from the dominion of the angels who created the world. This Noahs, who according to him was Jesus Christ, was an incorporeal virtue, who put on whatever form pleased him. Hence, when the Jews wished to crucify him, he took the form of Simon of Cyrene and gave his form to Simon, so that it was Simon and not Jesus who was crucified. Jesus, at the same time, was laughing at the folly of the Jews and afterwards ascended invisibly to heaven. On that account, he said, we should not venerate the crucifix, otherwise we would incur the danger of being subject to the angels who created the world. He broached many other errors, but these are sufficient to show his fanaticism and impiety. Both Saturnius and Basilides fled from martyrdom and always cloaked their faith with this maxim, No others, but let no one know you. Cardinal Orsi says they practiced magic and were addicted to every species of incontinence, but that they were careful in avoiding observation. <clears throat> they promulgated their doctrines before Menander in the year 125 but because they were disciples of him, we have mentioned them after him. The Nicolaites admitted promiscuous intercourse with married and single, and also the use of mates offered to idols. They also said that the Father of Jesus Christ was not the creator of the world. Among the other foolish doctrines they held was one that darkness, uniting with the Holy Ghost, produced a matrix, or womb, which brought forth four eons, that from these four eons sprung the evil eon, who created the gods, the angels, men, and seven demoniacal spirits. This heresy was of short duration, but some new Nicolaites sprung up afterwards in the Milanese territory, who were condemned by Pope Nicholas II. 
The Nicolaites called themselves disciples of Nicholas the Deacon, who, according to Noel Alexander, was esteemed a heresiarch by St. Eusebius, St. Hilarion, and St. Jerome. However, Clement of Alexandria, Eusebius, Theodoret, Bolognius, St. Ignatius the Martyr, Orsi, St. Augustine, Fleury, and Berti acquit him of this charge.